Hi, welcome back to our channel and today we're going to do a video about perfume history. Mm -hmm. um, although it would probably take about an hour, so <laughs> Sarah and I have decided to break up our videos on perfume history into chapters. Mm -hmm. And today's first chapter will be really from sort of ancient civilizations through to the uh, Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start right at the very beginning. Yes. I feel like I'm going to break into song when I say <laughs> that. Um, we'll start at the beginning with the name perfume. So why yeah. is perfume called perfume? So perfume is called perfume because it comes from the Latin mm. perfume or perfume, yeah. perfuma, yeah. Um, through smoke. Mm. Um, and so perfume was originally something that was always burnt. Yes. Um, it, like an, an incense or a burning mm. of leaves or flowers or something yeah absolutely um, and why was it burned that's the important thing. well usually for religious reasons mm. um so most often it was to um worship the gods with yeah. so to make you first of all make you more close to the gods mm. um, to communicate with yes. them through the smoke mm. um and also it was if you think about sort of the sacrifices in in ancient civilizations mm. Um, in the, the Egyptian culture, the Roman ancient civilization, the Greek, all the Greek gods, um, it was thought that you had to sacrifice your most precious mm. possession. Um, and, you know, human sacrifices aside, yeah. <laughs> your most precious uh, possession, if you like, mm. was uh, these sweet smelling substances. Yeah. So it really shows how elevated um, perfume and, and perfumed flowers and spices yes. and plants and, and resinous woods how elevated they were in people's mm. mindset. I mean, they sat alongside like jewels, yeah. didn't they? You know, yeah. in, in a collection of um, precious things that you mm. would have, perfume would be one. So let's explore just in this chapter um, a little bit about some of these ancient yes. cultures and how they use perfume. Um, and we'll give you some sort of fun stories along the way. Yeah, um, the Egyptians were probably the first, mm. weren't they? Um, and I mean, we, we see evidence of things like Tutankhamun's tomb yeah. that has been unveiled much more recently and they still could find the evidence of mm. perfume and smell the perfume, yeah. which shows you how pungent it, <laughs> it must, have, must been have been at the time and how yeah. important it was for the Egyptian yeah. culture yeah. Um, back then. Well, they were really obsessed with um, perfume in their bodies. Yes. And um, they used to do something really amazing. In fact, if you've seen our grass video, mm -hmm. you've seen um, a photograph of um, that we found in grass, yeah. um, and we'll get the picture up on this video yeah. as well to show you, of the wax cones that mm. some Egyptians used to wear on their heads, they're called yeah. bit cones, and they were, they pressed in like herbs and aromatics, mm. things like spikenard, which is a, a flowering plant, yeah. um, and they used to literally, if you think about it logically, it any time you hot. put, well yeah, but <laughs> any time you put perfume substances Into in wax, wax like if it you penetrate yeah yeah so if you left your butter uncovered in the fridge next to a piece of fish your yeah. butter would smell of fish so yeah. that's how like the wax takes on the perfume but then because it was hot like you say the sun would i mean this is disgusting yeah. the sun would literally melt the wax and it would cover your entire mm. body in like a, a sweet smelling goo I yeah. guess. which is better than bo I suppose so. so. <laughs> and, and again, it was sort of thought to sublimate the body and, yeah. and make you more godlike. Yeah. So really interesting. Mm. Um, the Egyptians are credited for really one of the first perfume They formulas. are, yeah. So um, one of the per first perfumes, and it was thought that Cleopatra would wear this yeah. um, fragrance as well, is something called Kefi. Mm. And very amazingly, <laughs> um, one of the brands that we work with have actually got a perfumer to recreate the mm. smell of kefi. So I have. They haven't um, gone into uh, Egyptology. And, no, it's and not the original. Two. It's not the original one. But, but this is quite amazing. That so it's done a, this. yeah, a little vial um, mm. of a kind of recreation of kefi. So we've got it on a blotter to try. Um, I can smell it from it's here. Quite powerful. Actually, it's, it's, as we were saying, they liked yeah. their pungent mm. smells. The Egyptians, for sure. Whew. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is it's very aromatic, isn't mm. it? You can very smell it much. straight it's away. Everything from the mm. earth you yeah. know everything all those naturals but i very much smell honey yeah that's sweet but Good not kind sugary of, no a thick unguent yeah. sweetness mm. um, waxy and that combined with myrrh which myrrh can be quite bitter yeah um as a as a kind of resin i mean that definitely 
it feels like it's got some mm. real um, potency to yeah. it. Yeah, and very spicy as well. Lots yeah. of different spices. Yeah. Cardamom, cinnamon. Juniper's in yeah. there. I mean, I don't know that I would wear this, but it's certainly very interesting. So now, what about the ancient Greeks and Romans? Because yes. they are also credited with um, using a lot of perfume and, again, burning perfume substances mm. um, and also making oils to go into very elaborate jars like yes. amphoras. Yeah, I mean, they were really um, the pioneer of the perfume bottle, mm. um, making beautiful decorative bottles to carry everything precious, mm. so perfumes and spices and mm. oils like you say um, I mean it's amazing because they needed to carry this stuff around because trade routes were starting to open up around yeah. this time you know in in early AD mm. I mean in even in the first century AD um, the Romans really were going through like nearly 3,000 tons of imported frankincense it's, which is it's incredible. amazing I mean and things like rose as mm. well they loved mm. didn't they absolutely um, but they it was quite an obsessive like it was quite a necessity to perfume your <laughs> So I read the other day that um, the, you may have heard of Nero, the famous Roman emperor. Yes. Um, he hosted a party and spent, I think, the equivalent of something like £100,000 on perfume in this one party. And I mean, quite sophisticated, really. They were having yeah. perfume, like, piped through the ceiling and, like, little cavities in the walls would open and, and rose petals would be shoved out. Like, amazing, I can imagine some yeah. slave, you know, shoveling yeah. rose petals out onto the guests. I love that. <laughs> it, is, it is incredible because, of course, back in those days, it perfume wasn't the spray. You no, know, it no, wasn't no. Like you know, in a formula that you would spray on your no. neck, like we saw see now. So they had to literally like sort of cover themselves. Yeah, with paste it. themselves with it. Really, yeah, yeah, absolutely. As all this was going on in Greek and in Greece and Rome. Meanwhile, over in the Far East, mm. they were also really getting into using perfume in their yeah. everyday um, life. I particularly like the idea of the fans that mm. they had to, you know, that Chinese, Chinese geisha yeah. girls with the fans. Yeah. Um, but the fans, the wood of the fans would be made of sandalwood. Mm. So it was Very like fanning yourself mm. with a sandalwood perfume. And even that, again, going back to the religious connotation, mm. they would sometimes carve their Buddhas out yes. of camphor wood. And, and we all know the smell of camphor, you know, it's mm. incredibly potent. So again, they were looking for ways to perfume their whole environment yeah. as well as their bodies. So, um, and again, it shows that perfume wasn't just, you know, over in Europe, it was everywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, not much going on in Britain, I don't think, at that point. You know, I think that no. we were still kind of, you know, trying to make a bit, fire. A bit sweaty <laughs> and smelly. Yeah. I feel like the, that perhaps the Romans came over and uh, made us more civilised. Yeah. And as soon as they left, we were back to the dark, what they call the dark ages. Yeah, in, that's in, true. Uh, yeah. Although um, I did read that in Europe um, there was a... a monks and abbesses, nuns, ah. etc. And in their gardens, they would um, grow really fragrant yes. herbs and, and spices and that uh, would... Lavender and yeah. things would be used. Absolutely. And I think that was kind of revered as sort of the, mm. the secret recipes and the secret But I formulas. think sometimes perfume also gets um, kind of confused and moulded in with medicine. Exactly does. It? And sometimes yeah. people would be using things as medicine, which were, we would maybe call perfumes mm. yeah. um, nowadays. Um, the Arabs were also very influential in yeah. um, the kind of well, making perfume how it is today. Exactly, because um, it was... Uh, different people think different things yeah, about this, this. Is, but it's widely thought that it was a Persian doctor mm. um, and philosopher, um, a guy called Avicenna, um, who invented the still, you know, the yeah. distillation process. And of course, it's distillation that allows you to get an essential oil from... Yeah whatever it is, material, yeah. rose water, for example. Mm. And of course, that invention will have revolutionised mm. the way perfume was made because now they had it in liquid form. Yeah. So that brings us to the kind of end of today's chapter. Mm. Um, in our next chapter, we'll maybe talk more about the Middle Ages um, and we'll come to Europe and we'll see when yeah. perfumery really started developing. Um, Especially in, in, um, in grass. Yes, yeah. So um, tune in for the next one <laughs> if you're interested for a bit more um, history. It's a, a very interesting yeah, subject. It's a big subject. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for watching um, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.